folks, and good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Warriors Off-Road. Today we're going to describe the secondary clutch and what we call the torque spring and how to change them out. Uh, I know a lot of you have bought these from here and you're a little nervous about how to change this out. So let's give a quick review on what to do. Once this system is out of the vehicle, you're going to lay it down in a secure area. Now, they do have tools that you can press down on here. I have a press. I have all the fancy tools and everything, but I want to make this for the more, the more common uh, person out there in the garage who's going to do this. Now, this is going to require a fairly large socket. I do have it. They're 46 millimeters. And I've already pre-loosened this to let you know how to do this. Um, easy way to do it. You can do it with one person, but it's, it's great if you have a second hand to help you out with. So, once this is loose, I'm able to squeeze this down a bit. I can finish taking the nut off by my hand because I've been doing this quite a while. And slowly bring this up. This is definitely under pressure, so you want to be careful about this. And there is our torque spring. Okay. So sometimes when you take the torque spring off, you're going to get the sheave that comes with it, the guide. So you just want to make sure you get that popped off here. And because you're going to want to reuse that with a new spring. It comes off fairly easy here. And, so once I pop this off here, I'll let you know. There we go. Alright, once this is off, you want to do a couple of things here. You want to inspect your clutch. Now, when this thing rides up, you can see what happens. It turns and rotates. Okay. And the angle of this ramp is what dictates how fast it will do and, and for performance-wise. So, you want to make sure that this is lubricated. You want to look for any damage or problems in here while you're at it. This one looks in pretty good shape. I don't see any problems with it. I'm also going to inspect the inside of what we call the sheaves and make sure if I ever broke a belt, there's no damage or burrs inside of here. If there is, or if it's dirty, I usually take some 3M uh, Scotch Sprite and I get to clean those sheaves up really good. I'm going to slide this back on here. I'm going to take the new spring. I see it inside the, re the receiver cup down there. Now this one's going to be a little bit harder. Um, so I'm going to get a second set of hands to help me out. So, so we've got the seat on here now. I'm going to take the actual clutch itself. I'm going to make sure I try and line up these, the flat sides right here with the flat sides inside of the shaft so it makes the insulation a little easier. So now I've got a second set of hands to help me. I'm going to show you how easy this is just by hand. I can squeeze this on there and get it put down like this. And the second person is just basically going to, just like that. Bob's your uncle. So now I can get down with that torque wrench on here and the impact and I can get this tight down to the correct specifications. That's how you change the torque spring in your clutch. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Alright, today we're going to talk about the variator or primary clutch. That's what this is. So we're going to explain a little bit about it, look at it and uh, go into more detail about how to how to adjust it or modify it for custom use. So we're going to take the access plate off here, the cover. It's just three screws with little washers on here. Put those off to the side. They're pretty easy to get into. Now what makes this variator a little different than some of the aftermarket ones is that the variator plate, the main plate, this one, actually has splines. And those coordinate with the splines on the crankshaft itself. Some aftermarket variators for different manufacturers don't have that. Um, so it's just something a little bit different, and that's how they line it up. So we're going to take this cover off, taking careful not to damage it or warp it. There is a little O-ring that goes inside of here. That helps keep dust and debris outside of here. So we're going to set that off to the side. Now inside the variator, you're going to have your main plate here. You're going to take it off. You're going to see these guides right here. These are plastic guides, and they slide up and down each one of these three pins, or these posts, smoothly. And you can see from the factory they actually apply a little bit of the grease. Not a lot though. So that's probably the one area that I would probably make sure that it's greased. Not overly greased, you don't want a lot of grease inside of here. And actually I've seen a lot of these that are actually bone dry. And that's okay. So inside your variator you're going to see what they call the sliding weights, or sliding variator weights. These come out just like that, and from the factory they have a little bit of grease on here. 
So when these get worn, uh, the rubber part or the, the composite part on these will actually wear down to flat spots or wear down altogether. I've seen these things just come apart and destroyed in some clutches. Sometimes you'll see wear inside the variator veins inside the walls here. So you want to inspect your variator after years of use or a lot of hard use in there to make sure that there's no damage. Make sure the weights are still good. From the factory, I believe they're 21 grams. There's a specific size for these. They're called 24 by 18 and the factory is 21 grams. And so some folks will go and purchase variator weights. I have a set here from a source, reputable source, um, and they come in different aspects. So here's performance variator weights in here. Now I can change these out. These are a little bit lighter. I think these are, uh, let me check here for you. These are 16 grams. So what that does is allow the variator to spool up a little faster because the weights are going to change. It changes how fast the weights will slide up and down. And as they go up here, that's what they do. They go up and down, they slide. Okay, so using a lighter variator weight, it's going to rev up a little quicker, but you might lose a little bit on the top end. So that's the whole deal. That's These things are designed for each engine, each application, and each gear ratio. Uh, so you can't just pull weights out of a scooter and hope they'll work. You want to make sure you do the math right. So by going to a heavier variator weight, say 24 grams or something to that matter, uh, it may take a moment to to rev up and go through the gear range, gear ratio range, uh, but it'll it'll maintain your uh, top end speed. So it depends on what you want. A lot of racers will go to lighter variator weights and go with a heavier torque springs and clutch springs. So to change these out, you would simply just pull out a weight and you would slide this in there. Boom. Pretty easy stuff. Now again, you want to make sure you have the right size and these are 21, or excuse me, these are 24 by 18. Let's see if I put a little grease in there so you can see the number of, well, let me see if I can do that for you. So 2418, there you go, 2418. Now they're all going to be looking, there's different shapes and sizes available for everybody. So you want to inspect that, you want to inspect uh, any wear on the plate, you want to inspect these to make sure they're not worn out, cracked. Uh, you want to make sure everything is working right. Now these, as they roll up, in the ramps inside here, they also, what they do is they push up on this plate and that separates the variator and makes it change the gear ratio. So anytime you've got the clutch apart, you want to inspect these. And so you'll line these up just like that with the three main teeth. And you want to make sure it's all lined up well. And then we would put the O-ring back in. All right. Da -da -da -da. There we go. The O-ring's back in. I'm going to line up the holes on the cover. I'm going to push it on there by hand. And then I am going to install the screws. I'm going to start them all first before I get them lined up to make sure the screw holes are just perfect. And a little bit more. One more to go. involved there. It's a pretty simple process, aspect of getting these inspected and then you'll just make sure these are hand tight. You don't want to kill yourself on here but you don't want to leave them loose so they come off. And they are spinning pretty pretty good speeds and as the cover goes down it's pushing on that o-ring so it's gonna you'll want to go around here and double, double and triple check everything. Try not to drop your screwdrivers. So you're gonna bring it down here and just go around make sure they're all seated right properly. Go back to that first one. Boom, we are good to go. So what's important about this is when you're putting it back on the vehicle, you want to start off with this push down, and there's a reason for that. When this is going on the crankshaft and it's going here and trying to line up with the the splines on here, if it gets pushed out, there's a chance that the wheels or the roller weights in there can come uh, misaligned or come out of their they're grooves. So I always start by putting this on the crank by pushing down on this. Now I'm going to get a crank to show you. Just happen to have one right here. So these are the splines we're talking about. So as the variator goes on here, I'm pushing down first. Now this will be mounted in the vehicle. And you're going to do this until the teeth just line up. And you can feel the teeth bite. 
Now once they do, then I'm going to get that beveled washer that goes on here. It's important that um, the washer has the bevel facing the face, the cutout on the washer. It goes on here, then you can put the nut on there. So that's how it's done. So that is it. You want to, always want to inspect your sheaves on so both sides and make sure they're clean like this one. This is a brand new unit, but if it was used, I would maybe take a 3M Scotch-Brite and go over it and make sure there's no debris on here from the belt or wear or glazing that's done on here. And folks, that is your primary clutch or your variator. Have a good day.